Conway is Game of Life is a cellular automation model first proposed by John Horton Conway in 1970 in Scientific American magazine. Even though it has game in its name, Game of Life does not fully comply with the modern definition of it, as it is a zero-player game. The initial conditions determine all for the events and the player, or more accurately observer, does not have any control over the process. To this day, 50 years after the original article published date, Conway simulation is still used, not only as an interesting programming challenge but also in economics, biology, physics, generative science and art. The game consists of a grid of cells, each cell either alive or dead, alternatively you can call them on-off, populated and populated. The game then computes next generation based on the following rules. If the cell is alive, it dies if it has less than two neighbors due to isolation. It dies due to overpopulation if it has more than three neighbors. And otherwise it survives so when it has exactly two or three neighbors. If the cell is not alive, it is born when it has exactly three neighbors and it stays dead otherwise. We'll use Parcel to build our TypeScript project. It's a configurationless bundler that works really well with various popular web technologies and frameworks and I use it to prototype things all the time. First, let's initiate our project by running yarn init. And then we can install Parcel by running yarn add dash dash dev parcel bundler. Let's start by creating an HTML page with a canvas. Let's also create script.ts, which will hold for our TypeScript logic. We can test whether everything works by running yarn parcel as rc index.html. This will run development server under port 1234, so we can check it in our browser whether it works or not. We can add some basic styles to have a nice grey background. Now we can move on to creating a board. Let's start by getting reference to the canvas element and to the canvas context. We'll be able to draw onto it. Let's also use width and height to calculate the number of tiles available. Manipulating the tile size constant uh, can be used to increase or decrease the overall size of the, of the grid. Changing the full color of the fill to draw individual cells and stroke draw borders can also be done. Now let's start drawing on the screen. Let's start by drawing borders. Here we iterate over all vertical lines first and then the horizontal ones, drawing them on the screen. We need to move them by half of a pixel in order to render them as exactly one pixel on the screen. You can get more details in the link in the description. Now we can prepare our board. We need a two-dimensional array of boolean values. Each value indicates whether the cell is alive or not on a corresponding xy position. In order to draw a cell, we need to know if the cell is alive or not and how many alive neighbors does it have. To do that, let's create two helper functions. The isAlive function returns zero if the cell is not alive and one otherwise. It also returns zero for all values outside the bounds. This way we don't have to worry about the edge cases in our neighbors count function. The neighbors count method sums up the results from its life from all neighboring elements and returns it. Our draw method function iterates over all cells and uses isLife function to determine whether it should draw a cell on the screen or not. 
we use few rect methods to draw a rectangle in the corresponding position. Now we can set one of the cells to true to check whether the logic works and indeed it does work. We can use the following code to draw a glider on a screen quite popular shape in a game of life. Now that we can see the state of our game rendered on the screen, we can implement the main game logic. Based on the game rules, we can implement the following function to compute the next generation of the game. If we run Compute Next Generation, we can see that the glider has moved one position. By calling the function multiple times, we can move it further and further. Now that we have all the logic needed, the only thing left to do is to implement a main game loop that will periodically compute next generation and replace the current state with a new one. The clear function clears the canvas between each generation is being drawn. The draw all function calls all the functionality needed to draw the current generation on the screen. The next gen function runs all the code needed to draw the current generation and compute the next one. Finally, nextgen loop is a function that runs nextgen every second. Now we can run the game and see that every second the new game state is computed and drawn on the screen. As fun as the game already is, it lacks any kind of interactivity. To change the initial state, we need to modify it directly in the code. It would be nice if we could to enable or disable cells while the game is running. Here we use add event listener to call the function on every click on the canvas. We use client x and client y properties to get exact position the mouse clicked on. The resulting position is relative to the top left corner of the document. Because we want to get coordinates relative to the top left of the canvas, we need to subtract canvas offset left and canvas offset top respectively. We divide it by the size of a single tile. It will return us the coordinates of the tile clicked. use negation operator to flip the value of a cell. If it was on, it will turn it off, and if it was off, it will turn it on again. You might have noticed that it's quite hard to modify the grid when the game is running. It would be handy to add pause to the game to give us more time to modify grid and ability to unpause it when we want to resume the game. To do it we need to add new global variable to indicate whether the game is paused or not and toggle it when we press P on the keyboard. We also need to modify our nextgen function to use the new value.
To make things even more interesting, we could add a way to generate randomly filled grid to explore. Let's use our keyboard key to achieve it. By changing the ratio here, you can change the probability of the cell being alive. You also might want to control the speed which game is playing at. Let's extract the default speed to a variable and increase the speed when user press plus button and decrease it when the user press minus button. We can also clamp the value, meaning we restrict the maximum and the minimum speed the game plays with. That's it for this video, I hope you liked it, but you can extend the game in various other ways. For example, you can make color of the grid configurable, you can make cell size configurable, adjust the game size dynamically so it always covers the whole window, make the grid zoomable, or add the ability to save or load the state. Let me know in the comments if you decided to recreate the game and share the effect. What additional ideas do you have to make project even more interesting? This is my first video on the channel, so please subscribe for more content like this.